Huh? Wait, you're that blonde traveler who's on a journey to all corners of Tevat, right? Who's asking? Do you need something from us? You bet I do. <sighs> I was worried I wouldn't be able to find you. I have a letter for you, you see. It's from another outlander. He was a crafty fellow, let me tell you. Took advantage of a loophole in our mailing system by opting for guaranteed delivery, then filling in the most obscure mailing address I've ever seen. Well, we are always on the road, so yeah, it's pretty tough to get mail to us unless we happen to go to the post office on a whim. So, um, what address did that person give you anyway? Uh, he just wrote, <clears throat> Next to a small, white-haired talking fairy. What? So the address is Paimon? Yeah, exactly, right? And if I failed to deliver the letter, I'd have been bound by regulation to compensate him. Really, he got me good. I count myself very lucky that I ran into you here. Of course, here it is. All yours. Come on! Paimon wants to have a look, too! Kaya, huh? So he's here in Sumeru. Hmm. Now that Paimon thinks about it, Crafty does describe him pretty well. From what he wrote in the letter, it looks like he didn't think there was much chance of it reaching us. Hmm. Or maybe he's just being sneaky. <sighs> Do you think he's making this sound like a miracle of fate so that we'd have to go meet up with him? Huh. Yeah, you're right. It's always nice to see old friends. The letter says that he hangs out at Jafar Tavern every afternoon. Perhaps we should drop in on him then, huh? Kaya should be at Jafar Tavern right now. Let's go see him. I'll have something I haven't tried yet, boss. Uh, sorry, sir. I'm afraid you've already tried every type of liquor we serve. Oh? Well then, just the bill, please. It's just as well, I suppose. I do have other matters to attend to. Kaya, you're really here! Paimon half thought you were playing some sort of prank on us. Hey, Paimon, traveler. Looks like the gods smile upon me after all. And come now, I wouldn't joke about wanting to see my good friends. <laughs> Wait a second. You must be here on official business, right? What do you think you're doing spending every afternoon drinking at the tavern? You itching for a lecture from Jean? <laughs> Not at all. The acting Grand Master positively terrifies me. Why would I ever do anything that might displease her? The truth is, I'm in Sumeru to learn about the alcohol industry here. So despite how it might look, I'm actually at Jafar Tavern for strictly business purposes. Sumeru spices are famous the world over, and it's long been rumored that this fine establishment was where a certain very popular spiced cocktail was invented. That's why the Knights sent me, their foremost expert in alcoholic beverages, to come and see if it is as good as the rumors say. And how did that go? So far, so good. I'm already in talks with some spice merchants in Port Ormos about some potential collaboration. A great business opportunity. Guess Don Winery and Master D. Luke are gonna make a tidy sum from this one too, huh? Well, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Whether this lucrative opportunity gets passed along to Don Winery or not depends on how nice I'm feeling. <laughs> hey, using your job to settle personal grievances isn't very knightly, Captain. Oh, what makes you say that? Very sharp of you. I wouldn't say I'm familiar, though. I just came here on the sly once, when I was very young. Hmm. And? Do continue. <laughs> Do I have to? When I said we could talk about the old times, digging up my past wasn't exactly what I had in mind. Well, all right, since you're so interested. Like I said, I was very young then. Don Winery had only just taken me in. I overheard my adoptive father talk about sending a team of merchants to Sumeru during a business meeting. I'm sure you'll agree that everyone's curious about their roots on some level. And my roots? They're in Conria. 
which is said to have been located deep underground, somewhere near Sumeru. And so I stowed myself away amidst the cargo, and silently joined the merchant delegation on their trip to Sumeru. But it wasn't long before the merchant delegation received news that I'd gone missing. Their leader promptly found me, and before I knew it, my adoptive father was dragging me back home by the ear. It was a short-lived adventure. Sorry I don't have a more thrilling story for you. <laughs> Honestly, not much. The only reason I knew that Conria was near Sumeru is because I happened to read that in a book when I was young. My life had less and less to do with Conria as I grew up, and so I started caring less as well. I used to believe that I had inherited some sort of duty from my father. But then I began to wonder. Maybe my father left me in the peaceful land of Mondstadt for no other reason than simply to give me a happier life. A happy life sounds good to me, of course, even if it means being cut off from... certain things. This is obviously all speculation. Simply put, I'm afraid that I'm not particularly in the know on this topic. These days, my surname, Albrich, is probably the only link to Conria that I have left. One death afternoon, please, boss. Tell me, what do you know about the significance of that name, Alberich? Dainsef? Ah, you've decided to join us. I was wondering how long you planned on listening in. I believe I've seen you before in Mondstadt. Dainsef, if I'm not mistaken. So you remember me. Then we are already acquainted, Kaya Alberich, descendant of the Abyss Order's founder. Huh? What? I take it that you weren't aware of this until now, Kaya, or you wouldn't have been so forthcoming with your surname. Oh my. That's quite a lot of baggage for a surname, isn't it? Though I must say, it does confirm an old suspicion of mine. I suppose that was why my father left me in Mondstadt after all. I'm surprised that you take me at my word without the faintest hint of skepticism. Well, perhaps what you told me just happens to answer some questions I carry in my memories. And in any case, I recognize your eyes. You're a pure-blood Conrian, aren't you? Very clever. Forgive me for being direct, but I sincerely hope this new knowledge doesn't change anything. If you've already let go of your ties to the past, then keep it that way. Kaya, you're not involved with the Abyss Order in any way, are you? Hey, hold on now. This conversation has taken a rather sudden turn for the deadly serious. And I'm afraid that as someone from Mondstadt, I'm not accustomed to this sort of atmosphere. So what if I know my ancestry? Do I strike you as the type who would be bound by that kind of thing? Relax. I'll be just as delighted to hunt down the Abyss Order tomorrow as I have always been. Either way, looks like we're out of time. I've got a spice merchant to meet in a minute, so I'll leave the three of you to carry on the conversation without me. Uh, well, all right then. You go do your thing, Kaya. See you around. And Dainsliff, no need to listen in from the sidelines next time we meet. Let me buy you a drink. <laughs> you don't really trust him, do you, Dane? You're both from Conria, but you get on like oil and water. The fact is, I still do not know him well. It would be meaningless for me to jump to conclusions. But can a person truly be unaffected by their ancestry? This remains to be seen. Well, I suspect that they call your sister their princess precisely because there is a succession of sorts. Oh, so if she was the founder, she'd be the queen, right? I mean to investigate the Loom of Fate. Do you remember that name? Yeah, the Abyss Order's evil plan! We learned about that back in Mondstadt. Not new. Not exactly. My memories suffer from erosion. But while I was recovering my health recently, I suddenly remembered something. Your sister, 
She mentioned the loom of fate back when we traveled together. Apparently so. I was also quite surprised when these memories tallied up. I recall that we were traveling to Sumeru when the matter was brought up. So, you're going to the place that she mentioned back then? Correct. At that time, they must have been introduced in one way or another to this concept. If I recall correctly, we were somewhere in Avidya Forest then. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go! Maybe we'll discover some secret that's lain hidden for hundreds of years! No. Now is not the time. No, it's just... I'm still waiting for my drink. Seriously? Wait. This place, it's... familiar. What about it? It looks pretty normal to Paimon. Was it like this hundreds of years ago, too? Yes. The forest has barely changed from how I remember it. There is very little human activity here, after all. Let's search the area and see what we can find. Is this... a field? It must belong to whoever owns that house over there. But it looks like it's been abandoned for a long time. You could be forgiven for thinking nothing was ever grown here. Or... wait... maybe nothing ever was grown here. It's an extinguished bonfire. Forest rangers, perhaps? Looks like it's been ages since it was last lit. And clearly they put it out carefully to prevent a forest fire, too. That's responsible. Nothing else stands out in this area. All that's left is that building. Come on. Wait, we're just gonna go barging in? What if someone's home? Unlikely. There are no signs of life in this area. We should be able to enter without incident. If you say so. Well, uh... You lead the way then, Dane. <laughs> huh. So there really isn't anyone home. <coughs> Ugh. This place is so dusty. Paimon bets no one's lived here in years. Investigate carefully. We mustn't miss a single detail. Hey, look! It's a bowl! Guess whoever used to live here liked to cook, huh? Can't you smell it? There's a heavy scent of medicinal herbs in here. Oh, so it's a medicine bowl? <laughs> hmm, seems you're right. You've got a good nose on you, Dane. This bed looks pretty ordinary. Huh, there's nothing underneath it either. What sort of person would want to live here? It's so dark and damp. Can't be all that comfortable. There's a box over here. Why don't we open it? Uh, and by we, Paimon means you. Paimon's just scared that whatever's inside might bite her fingertips off. Huh? This is... a mirror. It's broken, too. Was this a makeup box? Hmm... That's kind of disappointing. Paima was hoping we'd uncover some super big secret. Especially after Dane talked this place up. Doesn't look like there's anything else worth our attention here. You sure we're in the right place, Dane? My memories are quite foggy. But my subconscious and instincts both assert that something once happened here. But we'll exhaust ourselves if we search aimlessly. Hmm. I hear noises outside. Let's go and check. Noises? Is it... It's not much. Just some minor adversaries. Monsters? Wow, Dane's ears are sharp, just like his nose. He's in surprisingly good shape for a 500-year-old. Hmm. Although for someone who's as full of surprises as Dane, it's hardly a big deal. Anyway, let's beat up these monsters! I doubt that the appearance of those monsters was wholly random. There must be something nearby that attracted them. A ley line anomaly, perhaps. Hmm. But it seems to be more than that. Okay. I'll go slightly further out to investigate any issues with the nearby ley lines. I might be a while. You should wait for me here. What? 
You're going alone? You better not be trying to keep some secret from us. Your suspicions are as banal as they are unwarranted. I merely think that this house should remain the focus of our investigation, and as such, someone ought to stay here and keep an eye on it. Not to mention that if even forest rangers are capable of investigating ley lines, I will be more than able to handle it alone. Uh, fair enough. Guess we'll just camp out here, then. Good thing there's a fireplace over there. Let's make ourselves something to eat. All this running around has made Paimon real hungry. <sighs> Your cooking is as good as ever. Even if there was no other reason, the food alone would be enough for Paimon to stick with you. <laughs> Changing the subject, Dane's taking forever. He said that there might be an issue with the nearby ley lines. How bad do you think it could be? <sighs> we came together, but now it's back to just being the two of us again. You know, now that Baima mentions it, we really have spent lots and lots of time together, haven't we? Um, so... Don't take this the wrong way or anything, but... Uh... Do, do you ever get tired of Paimon being around? Oh, you stop it! Now you're embarrassing Paimon! <laughs> hmm... So, um, next question. Don't know if it's okay to ask this, but Paimon's curious. What was it like traveling with your sister? The stars? Wow. Yeah, Paimon understands. Being separated without even knowing the reason why, it's just terrible. But we'll find the truth together. Sure as Paimon's your guide. Just you wait, Heavenly Principles. And you too, Tavat. Uh, you know what? We've talked too long about this sad stuff. Let's talk about something happy instead. Because if you're sad, Paimon will be too. All right, all right. It's getting dark, so why don't you rest? Paimon will take first watch. Don't worry, no monster's gonna come and eat you up. Oh, come on! Don't say that! Paimon just wants to look after you for once. Nighty-night! Go on, chew! Off to sleep! Hey, time to wake up. The sun has risen. What a deep sleeper. You do know that we need to... Hmm? Tear stains. You dreamed of your sibling last night, didn't you? All right. Rest here a bit longer, then. I'll head into the forest to investigate. <sighs> halt! What do you think you're doing? This place is not whatever you think it is. Nor should you be poking your nose into my business. Be gone! Your travel companion? You mean, the one that was keeping watch by your side last night? <laughs> your companion departed for the forest early this morning. That much I saw with my own eyes. What? Business is that of yours, hmm? All you need to know is that I claimed this place first, and what I do here is none of your concern. Do I make myself quite clear? Leave. Well, what are you waiting for? <sighs> if you must, suit yourself. <laughs> I've been observing you, and you don't look like a forest ranger, nor someone from the academia. Still, I'm warning you, no funny business. Promise me that, and you can do as you please. <laughs> okay, fine, whatever. Just move aside. I'm heading in. You... 
Oh, go on, then. Have it your way. I knew I wasn't going to be able to hide this anyway. Just, just come in. But no overreacting to anything you see in here, okay? You understand me? Come on, then. Mind your own business. And don't worry. He isn't aggressive. <laughs> How could he be? He was too young for anything like that. So don't you lay a finger on him. Just find yourself a corner to rest if you're tired or cold. Huh? You know Conria? Who are you, exactly? And how do you know I'm from Conria? <sighs> do you... Worship a god, traveler. Hmm. Sounds like you've had an eventful life. <laughs> All right, well, um, my name is Ida, and you are correct. I was once Conrian. Uh, oh, I, I apologize for my earlier hostility, but you must understand, as, as far as I'm concerned, humans who do not worship the Seven are nigh extinct. And all who place faith in the gods are my enemies. That may be. But the fact is that chances to talk to people like yourself have been few and far between since the Cataclysm. This wretched curse of immortality. I, who knows how long I must continue to suffer like this. The curse. <laughs> it was a little gift given to the people of Conria by those vile gods. We lost our home, our loved ones, everything. The agony of... The cataclysm itself was already too much to bear, but then came the curse robbing us any chance of release. All we can do is watch helplessly as our souls erode and our bodies decay. Because, although Conria began with a single bloodline, it was a home. To others, too. Any who forsook their gods and came to Conria were welcomed as our fellow citizens. When the Cataclysm came, we pure-blood Conrians were declared the greater sinners. Upon us the gods placed the curse of immortality. But... Those whose ancestry belonged to the domains of other gods were punished with the curse of the wilderness as they fled, turning them into monsters. He is Kari Bear, my illegitimate son. <sighs> How times have changed. <laughs> I can say that out loud with no consequence now, but... <sighs> It was once a matter of unspeakable shame. I was a noble of Conria. I resented the life that my family had arranged for me. Then, one day, I met a beautiful woman amongst the people. Her roots were in Mondstadt, but that mattered not to me. It was love at first sight. <laughs> Kari Bear faced great hardship from the very moment of his birth, all due to my selfish desires, and, and I was never able to be there by his side for any of it. After all that, he turned into a hilly troll right before my very eyes. I always owed him much, and now I, at least I can finally be close to him. She was. We were separated. 
I do not wish to dwell on it. Hmm. It could be worse. I suffer the pain of loss because I once had everything I could wish for. <laughs> and now, now that I have lost almost everything, the little that remains I see with new clarity. If nothing else, at least I still have Corrie Bear. Ah, oh, yes, I, that reminds me. I, I only returned here to check on Curry Bear, but I do have other things I wish to do. You may come with me, if, if you're uh, so inclined. Over here. I'm sure you're wondering why I brought Curry Bear here to Sumeru. Well, it's because he needs a medicine that can only be made here. One which will help him to recover his clarity of mind. I do not hope to break the curse. I am well aware of my powerlessness against the punishment of the gods. But it is said that this medicine is imbued with the power of Sumeru's god of wisdom and can awaken the mind from a state of deep stupor. It has been used in the past to treat cases of mania. <laughs> I believe that it might just work. <laughs> I read about it in a book. <laughs> From the Royal Library of Conria. It was banned. <laughs> I mean, since this medicine requires the power of the Seven to work. In my youth, I, I disliked the life of nobility and craved excitement. I was leafing through some forbidden text and happened upon it. <laughs> what other choice do I have? What exactly would you have me do, huh? The gods have already punished us. What does one more sin matter now? Never mind. As uh, long as you understand. I, I'm sorry. I struggle to take control of my mood sometimes. Uh, perhaps a consequence of having lived too long. <laughs> As it happens, I am in dire need of some help to make this medicine. My hands don't have the dexterity they once did. I, uh, I fear they may be decaying from within. Oh, oh thanks to this curse of immortality! Hmm. Okay, to start with, uh, take this ingredient. Uh, also, uh, do you have any uh, of uh, Sumeru's regional specialties on hand? I believe they're called Kalpalata lotuses and Sumeru roses. Oh, wonderful! Oh, in, in that case, we have everything we need. Could you really? Oh, much obliged. This is the method for making the medicine. You just need to follow the steps. Hmm. Is it done? Oh, splendid! Let me see! Hmm. In all honesty, I do not know what the end product is supposed to look like. <laughs> the band book didn't feature any illustrations. <laughs> well... The moment has finally arrived. Curses. No, no! We need to perform one final step to complete the medicine. I said before that this medicine relies on the power of the God of Wisdom for its restorative effects. <laughs> Which means... We must pay a visit to a statue of the Seven. Let's go. Bring the medicine with you. Look at this statue. How can I bow before this thing? God of wisdom! 
Look at me! I will utter no prayer, nor will I sing your praises. You and your kind destroyed my home, wrought unfathomable suffering on my compatriots, yet he here I stand before you. You... You cannot mock me more than fate itself already has. God of wisdom, I seek not to disavow myself of the sinful blood that flows through my veins. I wish only to beseech you to have pity upon a young and unfortunate soul. My son, Carabere, he was turned into a monster before he had the chance to witness anything beautiful in this world. This is no fate for a child. <laughs> if everything the gods have done was in order to have the impious people of Conry bow their heads, then I... Bow to you now. <laughs> I have given up all I ever stood for. All I ask is for a tiny miracle. For Carabere to see this world once more. Please, God! I beg of you. <laughs> I have made quite enough of a fool of myself for one day. Let's go. <laughs> Curry Bear? Well, we've prepared the medicine. We might as well try it. Curry Bear, it's me. It's your father. Curry Bear? Curry Bear, please say something. I'm sorry I couldn't be at your side when you were born. And that I... I failed to reach you and Mama in time when you both were suffering. But I'm here now. Papa's been by your side all these years. I've never left you, not once. Are you still angry with me, Cory Bear? I know you're awake now. Do you not want to talk to me? I'm so sorry, Cory Bear. Forgive me. Please, say something, anything. Please. Please. <laughs> oh, gods above, what more do you want from me? You took everything from here, and I still bowed to you. I'd give you my very life if only you cared to take it! But you won't even let me die! <laughs> I knew it. I should never have trusted anything that had to do with the gods. I was <laughs> just eluding myself. The gods of this world have never stood with humanity, not even for a moment. Uh, other reasons. What do you mean? Huh. You, uh, you really think so? Give up? No, no, n never. And yes, you're right. I, I, I cannot let myself wallow in despair. Even if I must stay here with him for fifty years, a hundred, I, what difference does it make? I, I do not lack for time. Hmm. <laughs> Let's go. We'll make another dose. <laughs> the most crucial ingredient in this medicine is the unusual mushroom, which makes things complicated, <laughs> but not impossible. I grow them <laughs> in that field. The details don't matter, right? <laughs> Curb your curiosity and just do as I instruct. <laughs> if you truly wish to help me, that is how you can do it. There is a waterfall near the statue I prayed at. I need you to collect some water from there around uh, two in the afternoon. <laughs> I'll be here watching Curry Bear. Once you're back, I will make some fertilizer for the mushrooms. 
Good. Then please head over. When the time comes. Ah, you're back. Corabert's uh, condition is stable. By which I mean he still isn't responding. Anyway, give me the water. I need you to stand guard here for uh, a while. <laughs> Whatever you do, don't let any forest rangers approach the house. Understand? Ah, good. I'll be back soon. The fertilizer won't take but a moment to make. What happened? Was it monsters? Oh, thank goodness you were here. I couldn't have taken them on all by myself. I'd have to uh, hide and wait until they were gone. <laughs> oh, yes, uh, I've got the fertilizer. The effects can take some time to kick in, so <laughs> let's get on with it. Next, we pick the mushrooms and repeat the same steps as before to make another dose. <laughs> I trust you still remember the method. Hmm. Oh, uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I just, uh, after resting in this field for a while, my thoughts began to wander. I have been so very wary for many years. If only I could fall asleep here in this field and never wake up again. <laughs> I do indeed. That's why it was just a f fleeting thought. Thank you for your help once again. And now for the final step. Back to the Statue of the Seven. We're here. Let's begin. Wait a moment. Hey, what was that? Kari Bear? Oh no, he must have left while we were too busy preparing the medicine to notice. Come on, we have to catch up with him. That's... that's not Coribear. Oh, right. Coribear's scarf was a gift I once gave to his mother. I use it now as a marker of sorts. My... my eyes must be going. How could I not recognize my own son? <laughs> this decrepit body of mine... Oh. Ah, yes. It doesn't seem interested in us in the least. It seems intent on walking in that direction. Where could it be going? Yes. <laughs> the more we know about Hilly Churls, the better. Did it go in here? Hmm, well, uh, let's head in. What a ghastly place. Has it always existed? I, I swear I've never noticed it before. Huh. It looks like they're... Uh, worshipping. <laughs> sometimes uh, walking, sometimes kneeling in worship, and, and it appears to be in earnest. I've never seen anything like this in all my life. <laughs> what in the world does this place conceal? <laughs> oh... There's only one way to find out. Halt, humans! Fate has not granted you the right to enter this place. Hmm, do you insist on an audience? Very well. Then I grant you the trial of destiny. Who was that? He was... Uh, he was... He was a perfect being. I'm in awe. He had the most wondrous aura, a perilous yet beautiful power. Oh, truly mesmerizing. And yet, you 
were able to defeat him. Oh, your strength is greater than I had imagined. <laughs> Let's continue on. I find myself growing more curious by the second and more excited. I think we've made it to the end. <sighs> oh, dear creature, why do you bow down? For fear of the unknown, or for a power that you covet? Oh, dear creature, why do you bow down? For I am no god, I am but a sinner. You are like a flower, born in sin, yet pure, spotless. I know your fate well. You need no longer hold back your resentment, nor accept the countless lies. Go forth, become a transcendent one. Rise beyond the fate bestowed upon you. I shall shed a tear at the end of time, as I gaze back upon your life. <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> when I saw that thing, my, my heart was instantly at peace. I, I was overcome by a, a sense of awe or, or joy, perhaps. I am. I feel good, in fact. I, I, I feel better than I did before I came in here. <laughs> How peculiar. Oh, uh, is that so? All right. As you wish. Cory Bear! Oh, thank goodness! He's still okay! I... I have a strange feeling that what just happened was meant to be. For this to happen, right at the moment when I was dreading worshipping at a statue of the Seven, it's as if fate was calling to me. You, you say that I bowed before that thing, so perhaps it might be just as effective. Well, I have to try. No matter what, you said it yourself. I... I have to exhaust all options. <laughs> uh, <Curry> Bear. <sighs> Papa? <gasps> Cory Bear! Oh, my goodness, it worked! It's a miracle! Oh, oh Cory Bear, my dear son! You see? It worked! Kari Bear can speak again! Uh, where's... Mama? Mama is... Uh, Kari Bear, look at me. Do you know who I am? Of course. Your papa. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> salvation! Sweet salvation! Yes! Yes! This is... This is what this feeling is! How do you feel, Cory Bear? Are you fully awake now? Yes. It feels like I just woke up from a long, long sleep. I dreamed that I was hiding in a little room. I didn't dare go out the whole time, and I didn't want to either. Wait. <gasps> My body! What happened to me? Is this... Is this me? Papa? What's happened to me? Uh, it, it, don't panic, son. It's just... Uh, while you were sleeping, we, we went into a fairy tale world. There's no more Conry uh, here, um, no more home, but, 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 do you know what that means? No more red sky, no more end of the world. In this world, 
You have to be a, a little monster, but, but you get to stay with Papa forever. Am I dead? No, 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 of course not. Look, Cory Bear, you, you still have Mama's scarf on your arm. That means she's watching over you, protecting you. So how could you be dead? Really? Yes, really. You've all only just woken up, and, and this must all be very confusing for you. Just rest here for now. Things will get better. Oh, oh, and, um, you have to promise me something. Never take off your mask. Understand? Whatever happens, you mustn't take it off. Okay, Papa. I won't. I promise. Not since that day have I been so glad as I am now. I can't believe this is really happening. <laughs> I knew that placing my hope in the Seven was a waste of time. <laughs> I, I even worshipped at one of their statues like a, like a common fool. <laughs> Never before have I humiliated myself like that. Once a murderer, always a murderer. <laughs> I was naive to think that the gods who conspired against us would ever offer redemption. But the god we saw in that cave, oh, now that was a truly mighty god. Nothing like one of the seven. That wondrous power, it was truly... Enchanting, eh? <laughs> Surely that, that must have been the reason I bowed down. Hmm, now then, after one beseeches a god, and the god responds by answering their prayers, should they, uh, mm, do something to show their devotion? Piety is hardly my <laughs> area of expertise. <laughs> But surely I should honor the god that has honored my wishes. A sinner? Oh, don't be absurd. You, you don't know a single thing about him. How dare you utter such blasphemy? You and I have both witnessed his divine power. When has the Seven worked a miracle like this before? Hmm? Never! He is a god mightier than they, and yet you would call him a sinner. Oh, preposterous. No matter. <laughs> Believe what you will. You cannot shake my faith. I am going to pay my respects with or without you. No! Impossible! What happened? The Hilly Churl worshippers have disappeared, too? Was it all an illusion? That's true. Yes, it can't have been an illusion. I still feel that awesome and wondrous power flowing through my mind and body. It was neither illusion nor coincidence, and... And certainly no dream. <laughs> it was a wonder. Yes, a divine wonder. Let's go, Traveler. There is surely a reason for its disappearance, and I do believe that someday in the future we shall see it again. Could he really have been a sinner and not a god? Kari Bear? Where has he gone? Oh, no, no, no. Maybe someone else came by and found him? No, no, it can't have been that. There's, there's no sign of a break-in and, and no sign of anyone having been here. This does not bode well. What if he's spotted by a forest ranger or an adventurer in his current state? They'd... Oh, wait a minute. This isn't how we left it. Oh, no. 
Did he? <gasps> the mirror, it's broken! He must have taken his mask off and seen what he looks like beneath it. <sighs> if he'd just done as he was told! <sighs> we have to find him. It's his scarf. He dropped it. <laughs> Uh, looks like we're going the right way. Uh, come on. Caribert! Uh, Caribert! Where are you? Curses! Forest Rangers. Hey! Who are you? We haven't seen you around here before. What's your business here? Have you seen a, uh, hilly churl? A, a hilly churl should have uh, come past this way. <laughs> have you seen it? I asked you first. Don't make this more difficult than it needs to be. I said, have you seen a hilly churl? Hey, whoa. Look, sir, there's no need to get so worked up. There are hilly churls everywhere. What's the big deal? We see plenty of them out here. Exactly. Matter of fact, we just took out a few of them back there. Those dumb boneheads. You... You... Forest Ranger scum! You, you spawn of the Seven are all the same! I'll have your heads if you so much as laid a finger on Curry Bear! You... You're raving mad! You've got some gall coming here to our nation insulting the Forest Rangers! Curse you all, Forest Rangers! <sighs> I don't get it! Why make such a huge fuss over a few hilly churls? Makes no sense! You... He'd only just regained his mind. How could you do this to him? So tell me, forest rangers, did you really spare none of them? Did you really take out every last hilly churl you saw? Jeez, you're really not gonna let this go. Fine, you weirdo. If you must know, I happened to cross paths with a solitary hilly churl when I left the team to, uh... <clears throat> Use the toilet. I was frightened at first, but it didn't seem to have any interest in me at all. It was just bumbling along in that direction, so I left it alone. <gasps> yes! Wonderful! <laughs> Wonderful! Let's, let's go! Uh, we have to find him! Wait, you're leaving? Not even a thanks for the info, goodbye? Cory Bear! Cory Bear, stop! It's me! It, it's Papa! Whatever you saw, it, it was... it was all a trick. An illusion. I told you, we're in a fairy tale world now. Nothing here is real. Please, Kari Bear, come back. It's time to go back. Kari Bear? How could this happen? He regained his mind. He, he must be able to hear me. Surely. Come. Curry Bear, we have to go home now. Papa's here to take you home, all right? <laughs> I see. I understand now. Finally, it all makes sense. <laughs> ah, Traveler, you're awake. Finally, we can rejoice together. Wait, no. Why am I still calling you Traveler? Oh, I have known your true identity for some time now. <laughs> I suspected it was you oh, from the beginning. <laughs> I had to talk to you to be sure. Oh, of course you haven't. With your status, you can hardly be expected to know all of us. In any case, I've been using a fake name this entire time. <laughs> Ida is the name of a servant I once had. <laughs> My real name is Clotar. Clotar Alberic. You saw it too, didn't you? Unmistakable, eh? The power inside Kari Bear and the power of the one you call us Sinner. It was one and the same. <laughs> yeah, I am positive now. 
It's the power of the abyss, isn't it? Oh, at long last, I have seen it with my own eyes. That is no business of yours. A sinner, yes. Salvation for a sinner can only come from a sinner. Karabert did not deserve his fate, but now... It's wonderful. He will be able to weave his own destiny anew. Born into abject sorrow, he shall now become... the loom of fate. Huh? Sinister? Dangerous? Oh, I never imagined that you, of all people, would deny the abyss. How ridiculous! We once believed that you would bring new strength and hope to Conria. To us, you were the abyss. A wondrous mystery far beyond our imagination and comprehension. And the one who controls the abyss can control everything. We yearned for that future. We looked to you to take us there. But what did you bring us instead?